This is the Note Closer Show, where you get the latest developments in distressed note investing and learn the secrets of how you can control millions of dollars worth of property for pennies on the dollar. Get educated and entertained by someone who has closed thousands of deals and lives to support you in achieving the same. Now, here's your host, CEO of We Close Notes, Scott Carson. All right, everybody. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everybody. Welcome to this episode of the Note Closer Show. As always, Scott Carson, excited to be here today. And I'm really excited. I am tickled pink uh, at our special guest today. You, and if you're listening to this, you can see the million megawatt smile coming across this guy's face as, as he's excited. And I will tell you this, you, know, you never know who you're going to reach out there with an email or a, a social media post or a video. And you never know what kind of impact that has out there. And so you guys know that I'm very passionate about you guys marketing and sharing videos about your story and your journey, what you're going through. And uh, our special guest today, I've known almost 10 years, coming on nine years for sure. It'll be 10 oh, years yeah. in April. We've known each other. But this guy started off, you know, doing like many people, working an hourly job, being a truck driver and, and working a forklift, wants something better for his life. And over the last nine years, this guy has done amazing things, not just for his himself but his family and starting to really live a legacy not only for himself but also starting to help other wannabe investors in this community so we are honored to have my longtime friend on here and just an absolutely amazing guy uh mr tyrone sutton joining us here on the note closure show what is going on tyrone what's going on man what an intro man thank you thank you you know yeah, you're a little you're, you're, man be here man Hey, glad to have you. You're a little, uh, when I asked you to give your intro, it was a little short. I was like, come on, man. You got to have me have a humble brag every <laughs> once in a while. Well, I appreciate so, it, bro. Hey, anytime. So for those of, those out there that are listening to this or watching this video and I don't know who you are, where you're at. So tell us a little bit about who you are now, Tyrone, and kind of what you're doing these days. All right. Um, let you know a little backstory. Like I say, um, you used to drive a truck and whatnot. And um Man, just got frustrated doing what I was doing and, and um, you know, started learning a lot of stuff, listening to uh, satellite radio as I was driving on the road, you know, and uh, I eventually started being local and uh, started wholesaling stuff while I was driving. And uh, right now, man, we, we got a lot of, uh, got built a portfolio empire and uh, also we flipping some and, and, and we wholesaling as well. We full time now, so... That's awesome. Yeah, you were, when we first met, I guess I think you were working a forklift. And I remember the conversation back and forth, making 17 bucks an hour, but right. not, it wasn't, it wasn't paying bills, right? Right. It wasn't enough, brother. And it wasn't you, enough. Yeah. And you've got, I think you, your parents had uh, expensive medicine that was difficult to afford, some of things like that. And you were, right. you were working how many hours a week back then? How much were you oh, originally man. working? Man, I'm, you looking at, it was like 55, 60 hours a week. Just trying to, you know, you had to get over that overtime mm -hmm. to be able to make some money. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was, man. And then by the time I get home, I'm wore out, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So. Have all the excuses in the world not to do a little bit extra in that part time, that side gig, right? That's right. That's right. That's right. And so do you remember, I, I know you, you came across the, the blog I was doing that was 100K in 100 days and then started following along with that. And what, you know, you've. You know, was that the first thing that you kind of came across and, and started figuring some stuff out? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely, man. We, um, once I came across that, that 100K in 100 days, that inspired me, man. You, you, you documented everything that you've done, and it basically gave me the blueprint. And I just said, oh, man, if this guy can do it, I know I can do it. And, uh, you know, I, I loved it all the way down to, you know, just, just pretty much talk about what you've done the whole day. And then you said, man, what a day. Now it's time to have some broth works and kick back in, in, in a cold one. <laughs> I said, I said, I said, man, this guy just like me, man. <laughs> well, and that's the, that's the beauty is, is a lot of yeah. times, I think a lot of us look at, at real estate investors or stuff like that, that are online or something like that. Oh, I can't do it. They've got everything figured out. Right. And I think that was the, the, the beauty of it. I was just sharing, Hey, my, my, my good days, the bad days, what I was, you know, just sharing the journey. And I think so many people don't share the journey, the good and the bad to get where they're at on a regular basis. Right. That's right, man. You know, you just gotta, you gotta share that, man. Because like I say, we all, everybody want to, they see, 
after fact once everything you know the journey the aftermath but as far as the the hard part man you know somebody share that and you know other people can relate you know and that's that's what you brought to the uh paper when i was looking at it, i was like man i said this guy saying hey i'm finna get up in the morning i'm finna write this down and you know you gotta just keep on being out there being active i don't care if you just talk to some uh buyers and you didn't get no deals that day i mean it's just baby steps you know what i mean exactly so, now what yeah. were the things that what were the, some of the initial things that you started doing balancing work you know working 50 60 hours of overtime yes. and the family too or some of the yeah. things that you started doing initially if you, you think back nine years ago oh yeah oh yeah man i start let's see a typical work day get up in the morning well we i worked several shifts it kept uh you know switching up but let's go in the morning time 4 a.m in the morning and all the way to like uh 5, 6 p.m. in the evening, you know, dinner. Once uh, we up there eating dinner, I get on the computer and just start looking up stuff, you know, just with the end in mind, I start finding out. I say, okay, who bought this house, you know? And then I just say, oh, this guy bought the house. So I write his name down and uh, he's a cash buyer, you know what I mean? So I put him, I put him in the old Rolodex and I say, I'm definitely going to reach out to this guy. So I just kept doing it until I built like, around about 20, 20, 30 buyers or something like that. And man, I just started following these guys, you know, and I said, man, he just bought that old house. Oh, he just bought that old house. So I started looking in the same area for beat down houses. You know, we talking like 2008, nine yeah. and, um, and all the way to 11. And um, I said, man, I closed my first deal. It was like $3,500. I was like, man, that's easy. <laughs> yeah. And look, well, that's a, that's a, that's a beautiful strategy. You went and found people that you knew were cash buyers in your area. Right. You saw what they were paying and you were able to go drive by the properties and take a look at them. So then what did you do to find properties? In your, and where's home? Tell everybody where you're located at and what, what kind of markets you're investing in or, or working in. Uh, yeah, Tyrone. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm in the Nashville, Tennessee area. Um, man, I, I grew up here in the 80s all the way to the 90s, you know, and came back, you know. I went to school here, played football, sports. So I know a lot of the people, you know, uh, that I grew up with, they are now doctors, lawyers, and, and, and uh, police officers and whatnot, you know. And um, man, I, I talk to a lot of guys and just let them know what I'm doing, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it, man. Just networking with a lot of people and let them know what you're doing. That, that's huge. You're not afraid to open your mouth and go out and do that. Now, did you go to local real estate clubs or did you just start, start reaching out to people that you know and told them what you were doing? Yeah, I've just reached out to a lot of folks and told them what I was doing. Um, uh, I, I remember clearly when uh, this one guy, he told me to find, he said, Tyrone, whatever you find, you know, we, we'll give you some money for this, this, and that. And I was like, okay, man, I'm going to find these things. So Man, every every time I was off on the weekends, Saturdays and Sundays, I made it my duty to write down at least twenty to fifty properties, you know. And then I do through the week, I just tried to, uh, you know, find buyers for them. And it, it was a lot of no's before I got a yes. You know what I mean? Do, so, do you know how many no's you got before you got that first yes? <laughs> man, a whole lot, man. But you know that old saying they said when you, you know the, the the more no's you have, the closer you're getting to a yes. And, and that was one thing you you mentioned as well. And I just kept going hard, man. And I was just so excited. It wasn't about the money, you know, because I had money before and, and, you know, before I was working and stuff like that. And I'd save a lot. But at the same time, I was just like, man, this thing works, you know? So now driving around uh, Nashville, and Nashville's a, top, a hot market. I mean, it's booming Nash there. Now it is, you know, you got yeah. a lot of stuff that's changed over the last decade. It's very similar to Austin, Texas, the sister cities and music, live music capitals of the world and stuff like that. So that's you're right. driving, driving around Saturday, Sunday, you're just looking at dilapidated properties or properties where the weeds are growing. What are some of the things that you're looking at to find potential deals? Good question, man. Yeah, that's, that's what I was doing. I was looking for, I, I knew fire damage, uh, it, it, um, distressed properties. I, I said, oh man, I know this has got to be a go. I was looking at a lot of those. And like you said, during this time, it's when the market simply wasn't moving, man. Mm -hmm. It was just like, you know, it was just uh, people losing their jobs and everything. And I told my wife, I said, it got to be a better way, you know. And I started looking and uh, I, I came across a few of them. And, and man, I started having buyers calling me back, 
And uh, also, I was going to tell you, I did a joint venture as well. And, it, you know, I just started looking on Craigslist that, you know, you showed me that as well. I went on Craigslist and seen somebody, another wholesaler had a property. And I said, hey, if I bring a buyer, could you show me, you know, this, this, that? And I learned from that person and then just so on and so on. And then we split the profits, you know, so that, that was cool, too. That's really cool. That's that's really getting uh, find somebody who's got the properties when you've built the, the investors list. That's that's brilliant. Out Absolutely. There. Now, you remember that first you remember the first check you got was it thirty five hundred bucks, you said, or is it a different amount or what? Yeah, it was 30. Oh, man. <laughs> yes, I was happy, man. I Hey, you couldn't tell me nothing when I saw that. <laughs> I was like, plus the check that I was working. <laughs> I said, plus the check that I got from work. I said, let's add this together. And I was like, oh, man, this is awesome. So when I got that check, man, my wife said, I brought it home. She was like, this is fake. I said, no, this is real. <laughs> <laughs> she still didn't believe me, man. Because see, the, the, what it is, the, <laughs> the buyer who bought the property, he just went on and cut me a check straight out. He said, uh -huh. hey, let, let's make it super clean. He said, I'll write you a check right now. And he wrote me a check, man. We went to his bank and cashed that baby. Now that's that uh, you gave her. A, I won't say a shut up check, but a check that I hear that. Oh, this can't be real. It's gonna bounce. It's made of rubber. You know what was the thing? I mean, I mean, what is it? You think about that. If you think you're making what seventeen bucks an hour and you made a, a thirty five hundred dollar commission, that's what two hundred hours of work. You know, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. Uh, basically replacing that. And, and and what kind of time frame did you get that first check from when you started? Do you remember? Good question. Yeah, it was like 30 minutes. I mean, I said 30 minutes, 30, 30 days. Okay. <laughs> it, yeah, it took me 30 days, but it took 30 minutes to walk him through the property. And he looked, he said, hey, I definitely want this. I probably left, left a little meat on the bone, but, you know, hey, that's part of you, right? Exactly. It, it's it's better to get that a whole, a, a whole lot of nothing and, and you know, get a whole lot of something versus 100% of nothing. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So what, so what'd you, what'd you, what'd you buy? Was there something you bought initially kind of like, Hey, hey go to dinner or give something to yeah. the wife to go, Hey, go have a spa day or anything like that. Anything that stands out, you're like, Hey, let's, let's celebrate this. How'd you celebrate? Absolutely, man. We went to Red Lobster. That's our favorite spot. There you go, so. baby. <laughs> Cheddar Bay Biscuits. There you go. <laughs> man, you know it. Cheddar Bay Biscuits, man. And um, also, uh, uh, let's see the wife. Yeah. She, she bought something, you know, it just goes, it, it went on over to her. And uh -huh. I said, long, hey, long she's very supportive. That's all that matters to me, you know. And mm -hmm. I, I was already had like two other ones in the pipeline, and uh, one of them fell through, and then I cashed out on the next one. So, what'd you make in the next one? Do you remember? Next one was like seventy five hundred. Woo! Yeah, uh, there yeah. you go, there you go. So you're you're getting some of these checks, and you're starting to get stuff rolling in there. How long did it take you to replace kind of your income to the point where you're like, hey? Thank you, Mr. Boss Man, but I'm right. moving on. And, and and did you kind of plan out that kind of uh, exit? Yeah, it, that, that makes sense, man. Uh, what happened was I didn't have a system by mm -hmm. me just, you know, I, I kept trying to get more and more, but it was like, man, now I haven't had anything in too, too much, you know, and because I was working all the time, you know what I mean? So uh, I was like, man, now it, I missed this month, missed that month, and I didn't have a system in place. And um, so it was like far in between. And I think it took another six months before I, I cashed another one out. And um, that's where I just start trying to figure this thing out. I say, I have to have a system in place. And, you know, the more leads you have, the better off you are, you know. So what did you add? What, what were some of the things that you added as far as sending leads into you? Did, besides work with other wholesalers or did you start doing like some direct mail marketing or what are some of those things that you started to do to, to increase that pipeline? Absolutely. Yeah, man. Me and the wife, once, once she believed that I can do this, we start every in the, in the weekends, we start putting out bandit signs. Nice. Uh, let me bag up. Now, back when I was at the company I was working for, they had these chlorpass uh, signs. You know, it, it was actually ca car parts. And okay. that's where I worked at. And they, it, it was dividers. And I said, what are you guys doing with those? And they said, we're throwing them away. And I was like, this is the same thing people use <laughs> for bandit signs. And I said, oh my God, I hit the gold mine. So I was dumpster diving, grabbing the things up out of there at the job. <laughs> and the guy, 
told me, he said, man, I don't care what you do with them. You can have them. Man, I still got a whole lot of those bandit signs. <laughs> <laughs> well, but you so, think about it, a lot of places will sell those at what, a hundred bucks or 125 for a hundred of them. You know, it's about a buck exactly. a piece. Right? Yes, exactly. It, it was another buddy of mine that's local. He was asking me, uh, he said, man, can I buy some for you? And I was like, sure, because I had a whole lot of them. I stockpiled up on them, you know. <laughs> and um, man, I had those going on. Me and the wife used to sit at the table and write yellow letters yeah. and whatnot. And uh, my son, he was on the other side. He was licking the envelopes and throwing them. <laughs> and, and man, we was just had a little thing going on, you know. Yeah. And uh, I was I was getting some bites off of that as well. So yeah, yellow marketing, bandit signs, and uh, word of mouth and Craigslist. You know, it, it, it's something. It, it's it's a lot of us as real estate entrepreneurs, we do start off kind of being lone wolves, where the family is just kind of sitting there watching you. Like, okay, is this would be another thing that you're doing, another side hustle. Like, don't did you ever go through? Did you do a lot of anything beforehand? Anything that you that tried and failed that kind of maybe. I won't say burn a bridge with a spouse, but it's kind of like, okay, is this another thing that Tyrone's doing? Man, absolutely, man. We did the janitorial, uh, what's that, moving company. Uh-huh. Uh, what else we did? Moving company, janitorial, uh, car hauling, I haul cars. And that's 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 what um, the economy was down. I was going to get out of that as well. The guys was underbidding me on the car hauling. I had the little wedge the truck and the uh, three car wedge, mm-hmm. man, them, them big truck drivers was uh, um, underbidding me when we charged $300, they was charging $150 to move one car. So that just, that pushed the little three car hauler guys out the way. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was just trying, man. Yeah. I was just trying a lot of, especially a lot of my guys that I grew up with, they was getting in trouble, getting locked up. And I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta make this work, you know? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's awesome being so motivated. And I mean, I think entrepreneurship is not, we don't fall out of the womb as entrepreneurs. You end up building it and creating it. And, and we all, for every you know successful endeavor, we got 10 or 20 that failed along the way, right? Ideas. Absolutely. Absolutely. And also, I was going to answer the, your question. You also is a double question that um, family wise, they was, they was like, yeah, here we go again, you know? <laughs> And uh, it was almost like that Cedric Entertainer movie. It, it was just like he kept trying with that dog, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> and and man, it was just like that. But my wife, she was behind me 120%. Sure. And, uh, and she just said, hey, we can do this. We can do this. So. That's a beautiful, that's a beautiful thing. And now you've got, instead of just your energy, you've got 200% energy support. And then 100% from the. The kids jumping in there and getting them involved to see what's going on and see and, and sharing that information along the way. So how long did it take you to the point where you're like, okay, I think it's time that now my side hustle is bringing in more than my main hustle. When, how long did it was to you before you said, Hey, Mr. Boss, man, I, I, I need to move on. You, you remember the, that day or what, how long that took? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Man, once I had enough put up in the bank, Let's scoot it on back. I got my credit together first mm-hmm. and all of the proceeds. I kept working my job, getting my credit together. Uh, I got turned down. Here, go back to the nose. I got turned down from the bank, uh, I think around about three times. And she said, no, you got to get this in order. And I said, I'll see you next year. And I came through and she said that credit score was 792. I was like, oh, my God. So credit score went from 580 wow. on up. Yeah, so because I kept paying my bills off, paying right. them off, and then I had an open line of credit. So I had a blueprint, and then that's when, and then I stacked some money in the bank, and then I just told them, see you, and I quit my job, man. <laughs> <laughs> was that, a, was that the, one of the best feelings in the world, walking out that day? Oh, man, it was awesome, man. It was, that was one of the best feelings because, you know, a guy told me once one time, he told me, he said, man, he said, you got to control your own destiny if you want something out of life. And it stuck with me. It was actually uh, in the rap world, uh, Baby from Cash Money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he actually, his brother, Ron on them, I actually had the opportunity to do a, a video with them as well. So it's free, it freed up a whole lot of my time to meet them guys. And we did the uh, video. And uh, man. It, it, I just never looked back from there. So nice. Now you've evolved. What? Uh, let's talk a little bit. So you've gone from the wholesaling side, and you've gotten mm-hmm. into 
rehabbing there in the market too as well, right? Yes. Doing yes. That stuff. How soon did you do your first rehab uh, from that? Was it a heavy rehab or were we just talking like paint and carpet? What did you kind of your evolution into that? Yeah, it was just light. I'm, what I did, like I said, I watched a lot of my buyers and I've seen what they was looking for. And I had some real picky buyers. And my wife was like, hey, this one guy's name, Mr. Thomas. And she said, hey, I understand why he want to buy this type of house. He don't want the real old ones. He want the, you know, three, one, uh, three, two or better, 1,200 square foot. And that's what we started looking for. And it got to be mm-hmm. 1960s or, you know, older, right. or newer. And uh, I was wondering, I said, I wonder why. And it's because less work, you know. And he said, make sure you don't have to, you can get in and get out, you know. And then I had multiple exit strategies. And that's when we said, hey, we'll flip this one and make some money off of it, or we'll buy and hold and keep it, you know. Mm-hmm. That's, and that's, a, that's such a great thing, because then you evolved that you did the right thing, got your foundation in place, so you get some lines of credit from the bank to help right. leverage your capital. You saved money, put money away, so you got enough savings for a rainy day to cover expenses along the way. What did Absolutely. you see? A, did you see a big change? Uh, it might be just not from your in, your immediate family, but like your parents and other people around you that started coming to you and asking, "What what are you doing?" You know, did you see a lot of that? Yeah, yeah, yeah I've seen that. They they was kind of curious, and um, actually, my mom, you know, my father, they they retired. My father worked for the state for twenty five years, state of Tennessee. Then my mom worked for the board of education, and. Um, she retired, and uh, once I told her what I was doing, she was just like, uh, well, what'd you be trying to look for? I said, these older houses. I said, tall grass, you know, uh, mail in the, in the front of the yard, you know, newspaper and whatnot, and shutters hanging. And she said, hey, I seen two of them around the corner. <laughs> so guess what? She ended up being my bird dog. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that was my first bird dog. And she, she tell me, she said, hey, that guy, he haven't cut that grass yet. I pass by there every day, you know, and uh, and we closed the deal actually, and me and mom's closed the deal together, and that was real cool, man. That's awesome. You pay your mom a good bird dog fee? Yeah. Oh, you better believe it. Yeah, I paid. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and look, she still thought that check was fake. She said, "Boy, this ain't real." <laughs> but yeah, man, she she got the check and um, she was happy, man. And and we just from here on, she she drives around and when she go to the store, I say, hey, go another way home and and you'll find more deals, you know. So that's a beautiful. That's a, that's such a great uh, story. Now, now uh, you've gone to the point now yeah. too that you're actually working with other local people and starting to coach people on kind of your system. Is that right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, man. We um a lot of people wondering what I'm doing and stuff. Um, you know, I got a Dodge Ram truck, you know, and the guy said, man, what are you, what are you, you don't mind me asking, what do you do for a living? You know, he seen me getting out this new truck, you know, and uh, <laughs> I said, man, I said, uh, I, I mess with real estate. He said, oh, really? And this is that. So I pass out my cards mm-hmm. and then the guy said, man, I always wanted to get into that. So every now and then I try to get like four or five guys here and there mm-hmm. that's serious and I always tell them, hey, Find me something and I teach you the business. You know what I mean? And you really see who's going to be, you know, follow instructions and whatnot. Because a lot of guys be like, they won't call you back. But the guys that serious, they be like, hey, man, I got I got a couple of properties right here, you know, and uh, we have closed some deals and it helped out, you know. Uh, that's awesome, man. And that, that's the beautiful thing. You're just passing it on to the people Absolutely. that are also hungry. And we all, sometimes we all just need a, a handout or, hey, how do you do this? Help me out with it. I'll show you how to do it if you're serious about it. But we all know that really about 90% of people aren't serious about changing, you know, their standing. Now, uh, you got your son there doing it. Is your son doing real estate with you too? Oh, yeah, man. He uh he sent some leads in too. He He's a, he's my camera guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, man, he he's trying to get involved. And I keep telling him, I say, hey, this is it, man. If, you know, God forbid something happened to me, man. You got this empire that we got going on. It's definitely good to know what's going on, you know, mm-hmm. but we have fun with it. And he always says, he said, dad, I saw one, this, this, and that. I, uh, so-and-so moved out the property. <laughs> so yeah, man, I said, what's that address, man? <laughs> <laughs> so that's yeah. awesome. You, you're down, a, a three generation real estate family, even though it started in the middle with you, which is, it was a beautiful thing. What would you say, what's been the biggest, when, uh, how, you know, if you think back, how many deal, I mean, you've, you've, you've taken some stuff that you hold and buy and hold stuff now. How, how many properties are you holding in your portfolio now, uh, Tyrone? Man, right, 
right now we have uh, 15. Uh, and, uh, and we bought all of these when the market was down, yeah. uh, below market value. They have doubled their value now. And that's a blessing, man. And, and um, you know, uh, we have, that, that's about, a, and we manage all of them, mm -hmm. me, my son, and my wife. And uh, we, we, we've been handling everything. And I have like two handy guys yeah. around, you know, if something happened, plumbing issue, they'll shoot over there and whatnot. And, um, but like you said, I'm just, we just bootstrap this thing, man. And, and just try to go forward. We're trying to grow, like I say, far as on the, uh, uh, far as flipping wise and, and, right. and wholesaling. Yeah. But, um, and also I'm, I'm using some, uh, VAs overseas that uh, we just started that, uh, this year. So what do you, what do you have them do? What, what kind of stuff are you, they doing for you? That's awesome. They doing some, uh, marketing, uh, every time they list stuff, you know, far as like, you know, we buy houses on Craigslist, you know, et cetera. And um, de deals start coming in, calling, people start calling. And um, we got somebody else doing, so I got admin stuff. Uh, what else? Uh, uh, cold calling, little cold calling going on. So that's happening. That's that's pretty good too. So like I said, we just, we just started doing that probably like 60 days and it's nice. awesome. Yeah, we got the pipeline filled up now. So good. And then with cold calling, what are they doing? They call expired listings or FISBOs or what? What, what are they kind of calling? They doing a lot of um, doing high equity absentees. Um, that's working right now. You got a lot of landlords that want to get out out of their properties because of uh, due to this COVID nineteen. Mm -hmm. A lot of tenants not paying and whatnot. You know. So they just like, hey, man, you can have this thing, you know, make me make me an offer. You know what I mean? So, out, of state, out of state owners that don't want to deal with headache, te te uh, tenants, toilets and trash outs, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, in your portfolio with the 15, have you had pretty good success in, the, in your tenants paying on time? Or do you have a few people that have asked for delays or how's that working for you? I got one person that's that's delayed. Her husband lost his job and um, man, we working with him. But at the same time, you uh, they pay them month to month. So I told them, you know, get on top of things. We're trying to work with them, man. We know what's going on. We all yeah. kind of look tight. So we work with them and uh, they just signed the lease like six months ago. So just working as best you can, but that's still, that's still phenomenal. 14 are still paying fine on time. And you got every once in a while and trying to help somebody out. That's a, that's a beautiful thing. Now, that's right. what's, what's, what, where do you, you think back now, mm -hmm. 10 years ago, when you first started, do you think you'd be where you're at today when you were at thinking when you got started 10 years ago, roughly? Oh, man, no. I, You know, I, I didn't know this journey. It it seemed like it was step by step, but I just thought I was going to just be, the, you know, just keep on wholesaling and, and working a job, man. But <clears throat> real estate has been so good to me, man. It, it, it was able to help others out, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and also it fits my lifestyle. I always wanted to get in the game, but we always thought that you need, you know, you need money to get in. And uh, man, it was just that I showed value, added value to somebody else. And then somebody, I just got to pass it on. It's like a baton. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Man, I love real estate because it's like, it's a win-win. You know, I told my son the other day, <clears throat> I said, when you had a closing, I said, it's a lot of people get, get uh, paid. You know, it's like the uh, uh, agent get paid. We get paid, they get paid, et cetera, et cetera, you know, and everybody's happy, you know, and it's a beautiful thing, man. Mm, it is a beautiful thing and being able to yeah. help so many people, the title, like I said, real insurance, moving, all that stuff works sure. together. It's one of the most beautiful things about real estate there. Now, where do you see, where do your goals for the next five years or 10 year goals? I know if who knows what the market's going to do, but right. knowing you, you're probably planning out a little bit of things you want to accomplish. You got anything big that you're looking to accomplish, Tyrone? That's a great question, man. Yeah, I want to keep on growing this little empire <clears throat> and um, getting some more buying holes. Um, and also, uh, I want to get into multifam. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I love the multifamily. And um, I want to get into some new bills as well. Uh, I live out in the country. I live in the suburbs of, of Nashville. I'll say like 45 minutes north of town. Mm -hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> man, it's right here on the border of Kentucky and Tennessee. But, uh that's why my signal was a little bad up there where you try to call. <laughs> man, they need, hey, they need to, I'm out in the country, man. It's beautiful, but they need to get some uh, some uh, signal out there, man. 
It, you might need to, why don't you, you could go into cell phone towers and find some lands and <laughs> cell phone towers to put up there. We got some students that do that have done that for years. There you go. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So growing it, so you're basically, uh, you're thinking back, a uh, question pops up with your buying holds of 15. Yeah. Did you add a bunch at a time or do like, you know, one, two, three here and there? Did you fund them with your own money or the bank money or other people's money initially? Well, yeah, I took, um, I was buying them one at a time whenever they come in, um, come on the platform, we would say, hey, okay, let's go on and get this. Probably like one one every other month, so something like that. And uh, private funds, uh, sometimes my buyer, he he would be available. He'll charge me a fee for it, of course. Yep. And then we'll, we'll do the uh, bear strategy, you know, uh, just, just refinance and whatnot into a newer loan, so. That's good yeah. stuff. That's good stuff there. Yeah. Uh, are you going to be branching outside? Are you been doing stuff outside of Nashville? Man, right now we're, that's what we're doing. We did a little wholesaling. I'm trying to do the, uh, lot. I started where my family live. I got family mm -hmm. in Alabama mm -hmm. and uh, I got a cousin there, boots on the ground, you know, so to speak. And um, they checked the property out for me and whatnot. And we locked the things up. So I'm doing the Southeast, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, and Kentucky. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Taking down some property. That neck of the, there's plenty, plenty up in that neck of the woods that. Oh, you know, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, now, uh, you growing, growing your, growing your fund, growing your portfolio, getting into the multifamily side of things there for you. Um, what would you say if you're thinking back here? Is it was there a time in the last ten years where you hit a lull or hit a hit a really hard time by any chance? Anything that you had to overcome, obstacle wise? Besides the job well, initially, you know, anything else that kind of threw you for a loop or, or a deal that went south that, you know, not that, we, you know, we all have them at some point or wholesale deals, you just break even right, on sometimes, right. right? Anything? Right, right. I was, I was, I was just going to say, um, I have one and I still got that thing right now. And um, <laughs> man, that thing is, 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 I say, bro, an hour and a half away. And um, it's, it, it's the last Mohegan, man. We got a small house there. And my plan was to quick flip it to a, uh -huh. a, a buyer. So I had to tie that thing up. And then when I showed him the property, he said, ah, he said, man, it's a little too rough for me. He said, I'm about to bag out on it. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and we was going to close this thing in what, like 10 days. Wow. So, uh -huh. th so therefore, it was either if I, if, if I wouldn't have closed it, I would have lost my earnest money. Mm -hmm. And then I just was driving around town, calling up money, calling up money. I was like, man, I got to close this thing. I'm it it was perfect for us. We still got some equity in it, but it's just like it's so far away. We yeah. didn't have connection. Yeah, we didn't have the right connections out there fixing up the property. But now I do have those connections, you know. So, so you you don't really buy a lot of rural stuff anymore. You buy around where your warm stuff is at your market and, it, and size, it, right? Absolutely, absolutely. Because if somebody don't perform, we can. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So I just always keep those uh, doors open. I, yep. I, I always keep definitely, that's why I built those buyers up and they know I'm serious. And we're raising private funds as well, always. So, Have you had pretty good success in converting some of your wholesaler that you were selling deals to into private funding, into funding deals for you as well or no? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. We have some good, I, I, uh, my chiropractor, and he said, what do you do? And I told him, and that's, there you go. You got to tell people what you're doing, man. And I told him, I said, man, I mess with houses. I'm a real estate investor. And he said, really? He said, he started talking. And hey, to this day, he's he's one of my uh, fun guys. There you go. Well, that's it. Especially professionals. They've got money, but they that's don't right. have time, right? And they that's right. like to that's trust right. you. And they know if you don't, you come in for an adjustment, you ain't be walking out straight if things aren't working right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. That's right, man. Uh, uh, right. Has there been something as far besides helping out with other people there, anything else you've done kind of to give back to the community or helping other people out? I mean, obviously you're, you're tending to help out, but other things you've done to kind of help and give back to the community? Absolutely, man. We, um, that's what we're starting to do a lot as well. Like I said, um, now I'm working with some, um, my uh, assistants and they're getting stuff done and, um, it's freeing me from the, you know, being in the business so much. So now I'm trying to give back to the community. Uh, we do a lot of stuff like during Thanksgiving, you know, and my mom, and them, they heavily, they, they Christians, they in the church. Yeah. So we, we, we trying to do stuff with them as well. So we're, we're definitely trying to do that, man. 
Yeah, that's the thing around the holidays. It's always it's it, it's it's a great time. It's Thanksgiving, bringing people together, to break bread or toys for tots or other things. Just trying that's to right. help somebody. You never know how what a, a warm meal can mean to somebody who hasn't had a warm meal. Artist. We're tired of eating top ramen for 10 days straight or peanut butter and jelly sandwiches for the most part, you know, but being there done it. Hey, amen to that. <laughs> you know what? And that's, I think the thing is, I think those that go through a tough time like that, you appreciate the upside even more because you know what you so, went through, but it also, if, if something were to happen today, something were to happen today and those 15 properties that went away, would you be scared? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would be because that's nature. Yeah. <clears throat> but at the same time, if if I lost it all today, man, I got a recipe to how to get it back. <clears throat> because guess what? It goes back. Don't burn your bridges. Yeah. Be honest with folks. My first buyer told me, he said, Tyrone, he said, I got over $2 million line of credit. He said, all I ask from you, just don't lie to me. You can have it all, whatever you need. I'll cut the check. And from that point on, man, I just kept it honest with him and everybody else and just be genuine, man. You don't just be yourself. And uh, like I said, I show value. I start back hitting the street, driving for dollars. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, yep. You know, and, and like I said, just, you know, um, just fit in where I get in, get in where I fit in. Yeah. Tyrone, I absolutely I'm just I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm just beaming here. The energy coming out of, of you, you smiling, man, and stuff like that. Uh, the fact that your son involved and your parents involved and doing, you know, your mom and helping out and that stuff. That's just, a, that's just a beautiful thing for our listeners out there. The people that are watching this on YouTube or, or Facebook or listening to it on our radio network or on the podcast, what's the best way for people to reach out to if they want to you know, find out more about what you're doing, be a, fu- be a funder or a buyer for you or something like that. How, how can they connect with you, Tyrone? Oh yeah. Um, man, I'm on YouTube. Well, I'm just getting a YouTube channel going. Like I say, I'm freeing myself from the business. Yeah. So the YouTube, I've been on LinkedIn from day one since 2011. Um, and then also hit me on TS house connection 44 at gmail.com. And um, that's where we at right now. And we're trying to grow some more avenues and um, you can hit me on my number. My number is also on LinkedIn as well. Straight, straight calling. There you go. We'll make sure to put those links in, in the, in the description and the chat roll and the blog for everybody out there. Uh, Tyrone, I, I just want to say, man, you have done an amazing job. I look forward to what the next 10 years holds for you and your family. Um, just absolutely, uh, you know, you've done, you, you were coachable and you took what you did and what you could learn and you applied it. You didn't take no for an answer. You didn't give up on your goals and dreams and, and you were really committed to, to bettering yourself. So uh, kudos to you. I, I guarantee everybody listening to this you should get motivated and fired up. Uh, I, I, I'm just, I'm just really proud. Next time in Nashville, we got to get some ribs at some point though. All right. We got to get together and have some, something to eat, huh? Yes, sir. I got, I, I know the spot we're going to go to. <laughs> <laughs> I love That's it. Right. I love it. Well, man, you keep, keep kicking ass and taking names, my friend. All righty. That's right, man. Hey, I appreciate you too, Scott. And like I said, man, if I would never read what you wrote down, brother, that right there is what got me going and kept me fired up. You know, of course, you got some some valleys, some ups and downs, but yeah. I just stay fired up, man, and, and and just keep doing what you're doing, man, and I appreciate you. Well, I appreciate you, man, and one of the big, biggest thrills is seeing people pass on what they learn and go do some things, and that's what, what makes me more proud than anything is hearing success stories and, and seeing people doing things. I, I remember you you were so excited you got that first $3,500 check, man. You were just, that's right. <laughs> uh, I was I was just thrilled for you uh, to go right. out and do some things there for you. So keep kicking ass, taking names, buddy. We'll see you at the top, All right, Tyrone? All right, my man, see you. See you later. All right, guys, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of the Note Closure Show. Uh, listen to what Tyrone says, man. You can hear the energy, hear the passion coming from, from him and realize if you're coachable and you apply the things that you learn and you don't take no for an answer and you learn and you, you add value to other people, add value to other real estate investors, wholesalers, note buyers, whatever it might be, you can be that focal point to add value and go out and not be afraid to beat the bushes to find deals. There are plenty of deals out there for you to cash in and make some big checks. So go out, take some action, everybody, and we'll see you all at the top, everybody. Bye.